it has a function calling capability as well. As I mentioned, there is JSON output as well, but we're going to show you one cool idea on how to use function calling. Well, function calling, super useful if you're building chat applications. And it's useful because in the conversation, you may want to, for instance, gather information from some sort of API. It could also just be a simple tool that you have created. The way the model knows that is via this function calling capability. So a user may be asking a question, and if the model needs to go and find information using this external tool, then it will use this function calling capability to get that information. So we have defined here the tools, again, very similar because we're using the OpenAI Python library. And this one says generate the recipe based on available ingredients and dietary restrictions. So this particular example here is basically telling the model to decide whether to generate a recipe or not. So the user could be having a conversation with this chat assistant and the chat assistant will know whether the user is ready to generate that recipe. The user could be trying to find some more information about the application and so on, but it needs to know when to actually call to generate that recipe. And so that's what we're doing here. Once it gets to this point, then it can extract, for instance, the list of available ingredients. That's very important to extract. So this function will need that information. And then the list of dietary restrictions. So vegetarian, gluten-free, and so on. So those are the two main informations here. And required is ingredients. So once we have defined that tool, then we have this simple function here, which is going to help to generate that recipe. So that's where we're going to pass back to the model. And notice that we're passing back the ingredients after we have extracted it and the dietary restrictions if there's any found as part of the request. So let's go and start a conversation. So in the conversation, I have a chicken, broccoli, and rice. I'm also trying to eat gluten-free. So that would be like restrictions, the dietary restrictions, and these will be like sort of the ingredients. And then it says, can you suggest a recipe? So it's going to go into this function column. That's expected. But sometimes these models don't go there. And so you know the function column practically fails, and you'll have to go and iterate on this. But in this case, you will see here at the bottom that after that user request, the assistant generates this response to create a delicious gluten-free dish using chicken, broccoli, and rice. Follow this recipe. So now this is the recipe generated by the model. But we can only do this again because we are already passing that information to the model, right? So it has that context because we have extracted it using that function calling. So this is just the recipe. I'm not going to go through all the details. So we are leveraging here this idea of multi-turn conversation. And so we're simulating some conversation here. Then a user says, can you suggest a vegetarian version of this recipe? Then the assistant response here is the vegetarian version of the recipe. So now it goes into some vegetarian version. Okay, so this one is the vegetarian version and along with the instructions. And this is cool, right? Because the model understands the context, knows when to do the function calling, generates the right information, passes it back to the model as feedback, and then the model generates finally whatever information it needs to generate. So breaking that problem down like this really helps the model to be more precise and more accurate in the information it's providing for users. That's really powerful. As you all may know, there has been a lot going on in the space of open LLMs. One exciting news that came out in the last couple of days was this release of DeepSeq version 2.5. DeepSeq version 2.5 basically combines their instruct model and their code model, so their previous two models. They mentioned here that it enhances writing, instruction following, and human preference alignment, and it's available on a web and API. So we're here on Hugging Face, and here are some of the details of DeepSeq version 2.5. So again, as I mentioned, it combines DeepSeq version 2 chat and DeepSeq coder version 2 instruct. So it's two different models, one for code and one for general capabilities. And this is what we're getting with 2.5. There is a paper here to the version 2 model if you are interested in reading. And here are some of the results. So we can see the improvement overall on all the benchmarks like Alpaca Eval, Arena Hard, Empty Bench, Human Eval, and so on. In general, DeepSeq version 2.5 is outperforming the previous two models. And that is expected. This is more a combination of, of the capabilities of these two models. So here's some more information on how to run it, the chat template that's using. You can also use it with VLLM. So this is what they are recommending. And capabilities include function calling, the ability to do JSON output. That's exciting because this is something that's heavily used now when you're building LLM applications. This fill in the middle 
is something that's new and actually this is a better feature. We're gonna take this for a spin in a bit. I'm gonna show you some code examples of how to use this, especially useful for coding use cases. And here's just a license. Okay, so here I've prepared a very short notebook just to show you how to use DeepSeq version 2.5 if you're curious to get started with this very powerful model. And again, it's available via the API. So you would have to go and create an account here if you're interested in testing and experimenting with this model. This model in particular uses, this particular model, DeepSeq version 2.5, is compatible with the OpenAI library. So you can just use that. If you're familiar with that, this will be very helpful. So you'll see that it's using very similar code. You need to get a DeepSeq API key, so you need to create an account to do that. And here is the an instance of the client, and this is the base URL. Now, this is very important because there are some beta features, and you need to specify that it's beta when it's those features. I'll give you an example of that in a bit. So I'm going to try out multi-turn conversation, and in this case, I'm using DeepSeq chat, but there are other versions of this model as well that you can use. And this particular example goes through a multi-turn conversation. So this is one way you can test whether these models are good at dialogue and so on. So this one is saying, what is the capital of France? And then there's a follow-up, what is population? Okay, so we just want to know if it can use that context and can answer the question in the right way. So that's a very basic example of how you would do that. And again, it's just showing how to use the model. And this should be quite standard if you are using the OpenAI models and other types of models as well. You can see that it's using the same roles and so on. So it says here, what's the capital of France? You can see capital of France is Paris, so that's good. What is the population? As of the most recent estimates, the population of Paris is around 2.1 million. Not sure exactly what's the population, but that's what we're seeing here. And then it has a function calling capability as well. As I mentioned, there is JSON output as well, but we're going to show you one cool idea on how to use function calling. Well, function calling, super useful if you're building chat applications. And it's useful because in the conversation, you may want to, for instance, gather information from some sort of API. It could also just be a simple tool that you have created. The way the model knows that is via this function calling capability. So a user may be asking a question, and if the model needs to go and find information using this external tool, then it will use this function calling capability to get that information. So we have defined here the tools, again, very similar because we're using the OpenAI Python library. And this one says generate the recipe based on available ingredients and dietary restrictions. So this particular example here is basically telling the model to decide whether to generate a recipe or not. So the user could be having a conversation with this chat assistant and the chat assistant will know whether the user is ready to generate that recipe. The user could be trying to find some more information about the application and so on, but it needs to know when to actually call to generate that recipe. And so that's what we're doing here. Once it gets to this point, then it can extract, for instance, the list of available ingredients. That's very important to extract. So this function will need that information. And then the list of dietary restrictions. So vegetarian, gluten-free, and so on. So those are the two main informations here and required is ingredients. So once we have defined that tool, then we have this simple function here, which is gonna help to generate that recipe. So that's where we're gonna pass back to the model. And notice that we're passing back the ingredients after we have extracted it and the dietary restrictions if there's any found as part of the request. So let's go and start a conversation. So in the conversation, I have a chicken, broccoli, and rice. I'm also trying to eat gluten-free. So that would be like restrictions the dietary restrictions, and these will be like sort of the ingredients. And then it says, can you suggest a recipe? So it's going to go into this function column. That's expected. But sometimes these models don't go there. And so, you know, the function column practically fails and you will have to go and iterate on this. But in this case, you will see here at the bottom that after that user request, the assistant generates this response to create a delicious gluten-free dish using chicken, broccoli, and rice. Follow this recipe. So now this is the recipe generated by the model. But we can only do this again because we are already passing that information to the model, right? So it has that context because we have extracted it using that function calling. So this is just the recipe. I'm not going to go through all the details. So we are leveraging here this idea of multi-turn conversation. And so we're simulating some conversation here. Then a user says, can you suggest a vegetarian version of this recipe? Then the assistant response here is the vegetarian version of the recipe. So now it goes into some vegetarian version. 
Okay, so this one is the vegetarian version and along with the instructions. And this is cool, right? Because the model understands the context, knows when to do the function calling, generates the right information, passes it back to the model as feedback, and then the model generates finally whatever information it needs to generate. So breaking that problem down like this really helps the model to be more precise and more accurate in the information it's providing for users. That's really powerful. Now there is this feature, which is chat prefix completion, which I found interesting. And this one is specifically useful for code generation. Keep in mind, as I've been saying, right? DeepSeek is being trained and being optimized for code generation use cases. So that's the exciting one. And that's the reason why I had done a video on that because we do in our company cover a lot of code generation use cases. And for this one, we will need to use beta as the base URL. So just keep that in mind. So here we have the task. We are asking it to please write a quick sort code. This is, this is very simple. And then we're giving it this prefix here, Python. Okay. So this additional context the model will use to know in what language to actually generate this code, which is really nice. And it goes and it knows it needs to generate code. How does it know exactly to do that here? Well, it doesn't. And this prefix actually helps. And also there is this idea of using the stop parameter. You can see it in this example to avoid generating these additional explanations that you get from these models because they tend to be very verbose in nature. And so here we have what this model outputs. So it outputs the function. We can literally take the function here and that's what I've done and then sort of test it out whether it's functioning. So you can see here it's functioning. Now obviously I need to do some sort of assertions and maybe check this um, with some you know additional more complex examples and edge use cases and so on. But this just shows the example of how to use this chat prefix, which I think is an interesting one. There might be other possible use cases where you want to use something like this. This is more about like making sure the model has that instruction, what it is expected to output, which not only is useful for code generation cases, but it might be useful for other general types of tasks as well. So I'll keep experimenting with that, see if I find anything useful and maybe do an example later on in the future. Now, this is a fill in the middle functionality. Again, you need to use the beta base URL for that. And we're using DeepSeek chat, the same model. And here we provide the prompt, which is going to be prefix, and then the suffix, suffix self-explain. And basically the model will fill in the middle. So it's very easy to use, right? All you need to do is just add this additional suffix parameter and then you give it the max tokens, and then we can run this. And after we run it, we get this. So notice that this is gonna be like fill in the middle, right? It's just gonna fill whatever is in the middle. And I like these functionalities and features and that they are available via the APIs because you can just directly use them to get precise outputs, right? Instead of getting all these explanations and getting all these unnecessary tokens and outputs, the model sort of understands, can use this context and this information and give you those precise outputs. So this is the reason why I tell people kind of experiment and explore with these type of functionalities if you're doing like code generation use cases. So we get that and then what we can do is we can just test it. So I just created this little function here. I put copy and paste it all of the code, so up to the else point. And then this one is just what is part of the suffix. So you can see here, even the tab is there as well. And that's also included here. And then we can test it. So I could do, this is a Fibonacci of 10, which is 55. Hopefully you learned something here, you found this useful. Definitely always keep track of these open source models and especially these open models that are good at specific things like coding and maths and so on. But this particular one seems to be a very good model and is very comparable with other larger models like GPT-4 Turbo and Cloud3 and so on. It's not as good as GPT-4.0 or Cloud GPT 5 Sonnet. Still, we're not there yet. And there has been a lot of conversation about that. When are we gonna get to that point? But in my opinion, we're still not there yet. But this is still very interesting if you're interested in using these open models. Anyways, that'll be it for this video. Thank you so much for listening. Comment below if there's anything else that you'd like to see from these examples and these tutorials. Thanks for watching. Consider leaving a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and I'll see you all on the next one.